Welcome everybody, good to see you today. Uh, my name is Trudy Woodcock, for those who don't know me, and uh, I've been working with Miguel Angel for uh, 20 years, about 20 years here in uh, Merida, in the Yucatan. Um, for, for, those, uh, who, for those of you who don't know Miguel Angel, most of you have probably been on uh, some of us passes, but Miguel Angel is a Maya priest and master teacher. Who, has li who lives and works in Yucatan, Mexico. Uh, he studied with Maya elder Vincente Martin for 17 years and continues to work with the elders and priests who are keeping the Maya sacred wisdom very much alive today. He teaches us how to connect with the Maya masters of light who are still at the sac sacred sites ready to guide us today as in ancient times. Going to the source of the Maya knowledge, to the ceremonies, rituals, mantras, sacred books, pyramids, temples, stele, pottery, paintings, sculptures, and oral traditions that are available today, he finds the essence of their knowledge and then teaches it in a heart-centered style that connects rapidly and profoundly with his students. It's always a pleasure working with him and he is here today to share his knowledge on the Maya understanding of the fall equinox. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you for your words and uh, thank you to all of you for to be here. Of course, uh, as, as a Mayan tradition, I invite you to close your eyes and to take a deep breath, this first breath we dedicate it to our Father, Heart of the Sky. In a second breath, profound, connected with our Divine Mother, Heart of the Earth. And the third one, breathe, connected with the Sun, the Christ within. With these three forces, who exists in the universe on earth and exists in you as your body, your soul, your spirit. Welcome today to the spirit of the masters of the, of the stars, the Mayan teachers of the light, the ones who led the legacy, how to connect with the stars, how to connect with the days, how to link and relink again with our balance and harmony with equinoxes and solstices, suns and heat, and especially to be again in connection with the essence, with the sacred knowledge of everything, because everything has the spirit of the creator, heart of the sky, heart of the earth. And to remind to all of you that you are in the middle between the heart of the sky and the heart of the earth, and you are the heart of hearts. You have that precious heart who is here with the intention to self-realize spiritually. And one day when you return to the stars, you can talk personally with all the teachers of the stars that you receive today, the healing, the assistance, the wisdom, the sacred knowledge that you need for walking in your sacred path in personal life. So I ask the Holy Spirit, the Quetzal, the Quetzal bird in the Maya, to descend all over you, your crown, your seven chakra, and to illuminate, open your heart and mind today to receive these great teachings of the Mayan teachers of the light. Receive our Mayan salutation. In Lakech, I am you. Alaken, you are me. Take a breath. You can open your eyes. One of the titles that people give to the Mayas is the Masters of the Stars, you know, Masters of the Time and Space. And uh, they are, really, they are because. Uh, studying the Mayas for, for many years and always discover a new aspect, you know, when you visit uh, any site, visit many sites, but always I find that something else is there. Uh, we, we have, you know, the Mayan codexes, 
uh, available. You know, you have a chance to see them in the internet. Once in a while, you see that this uh, uh, information contains four pillars, science, the art, philosophy, and spirituality. How can you know anyone without to see the physical and the internal parts, you know? It's like a human being, we need to know the body, we, know, we need to know the feelings, you know, the soul, and we need to know the spirit of that. So the Mayas were great teachers, you know, how to connect the cosmos with our inner cosmos. But it's outside, it's not only outside, it's within you, and that is the reflection that is precisely in the Mayan temples. In, in every Mayan temple, in every pyramid, is the reflection of yourself. When you say, oh, that's a beautiful pyramid, is because in some way you are looking yourself, reflecting, and the beauty of the temple is the reflection of yourself. As you, when you walk in the forest, you say, what's a beautiful tree? That tree is a reflection of yourself. When you see a river flowing or a waterfall or an animal you know, running, a deer or an eagle, then you say, wow, beautiful animals, they are representations of your own spirit. So the Mayans reflected that in their ceramic, in their stellas, in the codex, in their history. But found that, you know, connection today with the Mayan calendar. We can say that there are five aspects, astronomical talking, that we are going to just mention today. It is connecting with the five uh, different uh, phenomena, astronomical phenomena around the sun, who is the two equinoxes, the two solstices in one sun zenith, who occurs July 16 in the land of the Maya. You know, and today we are celebrating the entrance to the next uh, fall equinox, who is September 21. So this is ruled by the energy of water. And two or three days ago, we have a beautiful, a beautiful connection with the full moon, you know, precisely uh, looking the moon serpent descending over the pyramid of Kukulkan, bringing again, you know, what the mother is sheltered one day. One day, the sacred feminine, the women, will have the torch again and will lead times of balance between the sacred masculine and the sacred feminine. And this is what is happening right now in the planet. So uh, this is um, just an idea, perspective. I want you to see here two astronomers. This is from the, the Madrid Codex. And this is one astronomer with a, a special obelisk instrument looking you know, to the sky. And there's another who is a woman who is sitting and receiving precisely the orientation to locate a specific uh, pyramid, you know, a temple with the proportion that is necessary according with the Mayan days. So this, uh, this uh, panel, this sculpture shows you that the Mayans had opened the third eye, you know, the connection with the crown chakra, the two glands who are very important, and now the scientists discover how important is the pineal gland and the pituitary gland, because they control most of the functions, you know, and if you open your pituitary gland, you are able to see another dimensions. You can see the dimension of a tree, you can see the dimension of a star, you can see the dimension of the sky. That's why the Mayas didn't call the sky, they call infinite. So where is God? Where is the creator? The Mayans said in the infinite. They didn't say the sky because the sky is like a frame. So the Mayans evolved their connection with that and they knew perfectly, you know, how to connect with the different revolutions of the planet. That's why it's very important to understand that between the two forces, the fall equinox is bringing us the water as an element connected with the emotions, as an element connected with, you know, the moon, and as an element connected with our mother, Ixchel, and Ixmukane. So this is the time for the Mayas to work with emotions. So you can go to a, maybe you have a chance to go to a river close by, or to a waterfall, or to the sea, or just in your home, take a shower. 
without profound connection with the water and you can release and you can walk you know in that water who remains connected with your emotions so release what is not necessary ask to the mother come heal you mother heal me mother profound in my wounds because this is the time when that energy in the mayan calendar is profound connected with the element precisely the water so the mayas built up a special point who is uh, our point of reference in the yucatan to precisely confirm the different dates in the mayan calendar who is i'm talking about the sacred beautiful maya kukulkan's pyramid who is located in the center of the yucatan peninsula who is the kukulkan's pyramid the chichen itza and as many of you know <clears throat> this is the phenomenon who who happen in the equinoxes, you know. You see here seven triangles, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, coming from the moment when the sun is descended to the northern balustrade. And this is the moment when us is a connection with our seven bioenergetical centers, chakras, and activation of our inner energy. So these seven, uh, Triangles are connected to with the seven sons of the Pleiades constellation that the Mayans call the Sabkan or Rattle Snake constellation. That's why you see this. This is the tail of the rattlesnake who shows in the northern hemisphere. And you see this. That's why the Mayas call Rattle Snake constellation. And this is why this pyramid represents the teachers who came from Pleiades in the Mayan time, Balankitse, Balanakab, Mahakuta, Ikibalan came with the world wives to teach the Maya for a time, and they did return to the Pleiadians and sons. One of them is called Maya. So this is the solar essence, the sacred masculine who is producing in this time. And I want you to see, I want you to see this. This is another perspective of the same moment, but I want you to uh, see this. In the moment when you see the seven triangles in formation, you don't have a chance to see them from the above. But in that moment, from the above, the head of the serpent moves towards the warrior's temple. I, want, I hope that you can see it. It's right here in the floor. And that means that the light who is descending is giving us the opportunity to move yourself looking for your inner warrior. Are you our, our inner warrior? Where is it? In the temple of the warriors, who is connected with all this perspective of your inner jaguar, who could can descend to show you the sacred path of the inner transformation. Transform your emotions is the recommendation of all the people who works now. The emotions have a lot of potentiality, but if you use it in a positive way, Kukulkan is going to activate your inner waters, 75% in the blood, in the sexual energy, in your tears, in your sweat, and you are going to reactivate precisely the descendant of Kukulkan like this. This is it. Uh, it's a, a drawing who a friend of mine made symbolically is showing you know the moment when kukulkan is descending you know as a serpent the serpent represents the sacred wisdom the sacred knowledge the inner transformation kukulkan the lord that is honor in the infinite why kukulkan with feathers because the feathers represent the connection with the sky with the spirit, with the sun, with the energy of the light, with the inner process of transformation. You can fly every night. All of us, we fly every night, you know, consciousness or unconsciousness. But when we have consciousness in our dreams, we begin to evolve to another frequency and dimension. One day, one day the teacher said, one day we will see each other in dreams and we have the chance to reconnect ourselves with the masters of the light, 
with the ones you pray, with the ones who guide you, with the angels, with the Elohims, with the masters who exist in every tradition, because they live in those dimensions. That's why Kukulkan, the serpent itself, represents the science, the knowledge, you know, the wisdom. But with feathers, then represents the spirit. So feather, serpent. Are you ready to access to the level to be a feather serpent? Then you need to begin to transform, to transmute your emotions. What emotions are bothering you? Talk to Google Khan, talk to the great teachers, talk to the mother. Mother, I'm here, your daughter, your son, help me. You know, invoke, call your inner jaguar, the aspect who is within your heart and said, I'm ready to transform myself with your help. I, am, I want to release these emotions as wound me. This is the moment when in the equinoxes, the forces descend over this planet, bringing the balance. That's why equinox means. Equinox is balance, is equal, day and night. So what a splendid time now with the energy of the full moon and the equinox to balance yourself, your sacred masculine with your sacred feminine, body, soul, spirit, emotions, thoughts, ideas. All these are moments where the frequencies arise in our planet. And if we are ready, we'll receive these amazing energies to make us to step on in the next level of frequency. So until this point, you know, the Mayan calendar basically is connected with the sun. But what happened with the moon? And it's when I opened my eyes, I said, if we are talking about the sacred masculine, and what is the sacred feminine in the equinoxes? And what is the sacred feminine in the solstices? And what is the sacred feminine in the moments of the beginning of the year? or the Mayan calendar. We're going to talk more in our Mayan calendar workshop in the next days. But this is what comes from one of the Mayan codexes in relation with the moon. Uku Kan. U is moon. Ku is the goddess. Kan, serpent. Uku Kan is the moon goddess serpent the moon goddess serpent represented by a pot a jar who represents the energy of the earth receiving and this is the serpent down there you know representation of that energy that strength who is the one who makes life fertility abundance and all and all the things grow all that we eat came from the earth apples, lemons, papayas, all, you know, comes from that amazing uku kan, uku kan, the moon goddess serpent, that energy who the Mayans conceive as, as the earthquakes. When it's a earthquake, instead to have fear, accept it, accept it. You are living in a volcanic area, accept it, the earthquakes. The earthquakes move all your chakras. The earthquakes move all that is inside you. You know, a Chichen Itza in the 40s, before all the tourism start, they found quite interesting symbols that I didn't know, but now I have the chance to show you first time. And this is what they found. First, look in this point. This is a symbol of a serpent's moon, the symbol of a serpent's moon. This is original, how they found the symbol. I just put both that you have the perspective, but this serpent moon is receiving the energy from the sky. And this was found in one of the temples at Chichen Itza, but they hide. They didn't show us. So this is why you know, it's so important that now we understand the symbol of the moon was known by the Mayas by many, many, many years ago, but now is the time that we are ready to understand. 
So this is the way that they found originally in the temple, sculpted in the temple. And this is the way that you can see perfectly. There is a symbol of an eight in the middle of her body who represents the infinite, the contact with the void of the creation in the cosmos. Serpent means to be wise. Wise men, wise women, wise priests, wise priestesses. And they found another one at the same time, who is this. This is Naui Olin. You see here, the amazing cross or the swastik in the Maya is called in the center of Mexico, Naui Olin. Naui Olin means four movements, the four directions, the four cardinal points. In the Maya, can touch. Can for touch is movement. The four movements, the four cardinal points, the four directions, east, west, north, south, center, cross. I am a cross. The pyramid of Kukulkan from above is a cross. Who is the cross? You are the cross. You are the temple. You are the building with all the great possibilities of inner transformation. It's not outside, it's inside. You are the pyramid, you are the temple, and whatever I shall tell you, you see outside is inside. And this is the great moment when we can see that the process of, you know, to transform in this time with the energy of the fall equinox. This is the time where the serpent, you know, make the cross. Every, every time you, you shake hands or hug someone or see when you're sizing, you make the cross. When somebody kisses you, you made the cross. So everything is crossing because we are do, doing that in a way that we are interchanging energies. Look, this one is very impressive. This is a sun's eclipse. And normally we have the idea that eclipses have something negative. I don't have that idea. For me, you know, this sun's uh, eclipse means the sun represents this big serpent because the moon in comparison with the sun is small. Okay, so what happened when the sun's eclipse happened, the moon interfered and crossed in front of the sun, who is this big serpent, who is sending, you know, this great energy of light transforming the sacred feminine transforming mother nature, transforming your own self in something that we call light is equal to consciousness. So in the eclipses, this is what happened. The big serpent, who is the representation of the sun, Quetzalcoatl, Kukulkan, is there to impact in the body of the moon, in the body of your sacred feminine, transforming in your emotions, transforming in your own being, producing the change precisely in this time. That's why the serpent, in this case, you know, the sun's eclipse is represented in this way. There is uh, the ones who had visited Chichen, the guys explained that there are three Chichen Itzas. The modern one, then the medium one, who is where the observatory is, but there is an, another who is the oldest one, is the ancient one. This one, you know, was open years ago, but then suddenly they closed. But this area of the old one most is connected with Lemuria and Atlantis. This is the place where you still have the connection with the great cosmos, the great mysteries. But my teacher explained me that in the ancient times, there was a temple, the lunar temple, the moon's temple, that it was called Aka Bolsuf. Aka Bolsuf. It's an ancient moon's temple in the old Chichen Itza, who is precisely that area, who is connected with another great temple, who is the temple of the turtle. 
The temple of the turtle is there. Precisely the turtle represents the island, the ancient island, Atlantis, that give us the opportunity all to receive right now the legends, the stories, the knowledge from Atlantean to the Mayas. You know, in that area, unfortunately, it's still closed, but this is the area who is connected with all these great symbols, the Toltecs uh, supporters, the Toltecs warriors there, the ancient temple of the mother, Ixchel Ichmukane. Ixchel is the mother who is coming with the light to help you, to guide you, to assist you, to transform you with the rainbow, with the light, with the profound connection of love that your mother has for you unconditionally. She loves you unconditionally. She loves you as the grandmother Chmukane. You know, so Akabul too was a temple of the mysteries where the people, especially women, they perform ceremonies. One day doing a meditation in that place, I, I watch in my vision, each, each shell coming with uh, 20 different priestesses, all dressed white, and they were collecting herbs to prepare the medicine. And there were big pots, they were boiling, they were boiling herbs, and they preparing herbs in that area. And I remember to see this great mother, each shell, guiding all of them with great respect, love, and honor. This is what we need now, to return to that, process of to know ourselves and no more to offend, no more war, no more unharmony. Day by day, we have chances to, change, to send that. So these temples were dedicated to our mother shell, to divine sacred serpent, the serpent who is connected, the ones who uh, practice yoga in the Kundalini, yoga Kundalini, they explain to you very well that are Two serpents, one is solar and one is lunar. And these two serpents ascended the energy to the channels that they know with the name of Nadis. And the Nadis have in the center another channel, who is the channel of Chuchubna, who is very, very fine and goes inside of the spine. When you touch your spine, the spine is the tree of life with all the nadis and all the nervous system. That's why we need to be very cautious when somebody wants to touch our tree, the tree of the life, who is the vertebras, who is the spine. Mother is Mukane, is the one who is there transforming, transforming, transforming all these energies who come to this planet with intention to become then in fruits, to become then in all this grass, in all this green, in all these rivers, in all these trees, in all the sky, in all the animals that we know. So we are so lucky to have these forces still with us. And that's why it's so important. Now we understand there is the solar descent of Kukulkan, but there is the moon's descent of Kukulkan. So two, two days ago, we had the descent of the serpent moon here is, of course, is 4 a.m. at Chichen Itza. And is when the serpent moon descended with the seven triangles. Exactly. Men and women in perfect balance, in perfect harmony. So if we have the serpent of the sun, we still now have improved scientifically exists the serpent of the moon. It's not a great time to see that we are in a precise moment to balance and to harmonize all that we know about ourselves with the sacred masculine, the sacred feminine, through meditation, through our ceremonies, to our inner process. This is the time that we're calling to be in this planet, in this time, in this area, to pre perform precisely all these aspects of the mother. So I invite you really to connect in this time with the fall equinox and to us to connect with the teachers of the light, with Quetzalcoatl, Kukulkan, with the heart of the sky, heart of the air, and to ask for that profound connection that we have. So Kukulkan is the, is the name that is used all the time to activate the Kundalini energy 
and to release and to heal with the help of the mother all this process. So I invite you now to do a meditation about this full appearance. I invite you to have a seat comfortable. Close your eyes. Close your eyes and in this moment, call your divine guides, your spiritual guides, as in the Maya we call heart of the sky, heart of the earth, to come, to come, to come. Father, Mother, please assist, guide, heal all brothers and sisters, all participants in this webinar without distinction. Wherever there are, the Holy Spirit is eternal, is magnificent, and has the potency to be there in every place, to everyone, to assist, to guide, to help them to transform and to transmute their emotions in light, in love, in harmony, in patience, in enthusiasm, in joy, in peace. This is the time to call precisely our mother and our father, to call Kukulkan, to come, to come, to come, to activate our inner energy, the sacred fire in our spine, and to process, to heal the different dimensions of our bodies, the different dimensions of our chakras, with the sacred, sacred mantra, Ku Kul Kam. 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 who bother you the most which is the emotion who is almost for you difficult who always put around troubles that you cannot make the transformation which is that emotion who is within you who is avoiding you to fulfill your spiritual path or your particular feelings about the life, your purpose about the life. You need to take consciousness, make consciousness of that and imagine in this moment that you are able to release, to release, to release in the holy presence of the Divine Mother that represents the emotions, the water and the moon, 
within you with all the humbleness you have within you you can say the words who comes to your heart through your mouth said mother I am here your daughter your son in this time in this moment ready to release this great emotion who has been an obstacle in my life and now I'm ready to release in your hands and to become this emotion in a positive side in a positive energy in a positive feeling within myself mother received it mother receive it mother i release with my consciousness to your sacred hands help me help me help me heal me heal me mother heal me mother heal me mother touch me mother touch me mother touch my mind touch my throat touch my heart touch my solar plexus touch my emotions touch, touch my organs mother touch me touch me touch me my body soul spirit mother it shall it shall it shall it shall consciousness in your hands this emotion this emotion who has been in me a great obstacle in my life and I do with all my heart with all my love to you mother 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 is spoken grandmother is spoken transform this emotion in the most beautiful perils in diamonds in jewels in the center of the planet with your sacred fire mother grandmother ish Thank you, thank you, thank you for to transform this emotion in a positive emotion in my life. Hold my hands, Mother. Bless me, bless me, bless me. In my physical, 
in my seven bodies. With all your love, mother, I am your daughter, I am your son, and I kneel in front of your divine holy presence. You are my mother. You are the heart of the earth. Thank you, Mother. Thank you. Thank you, Mother. Now, feel the beat of your heart. Connect with the beat of your heart. There is a mantra who is to cleanse your heart, to activate your love, your unconditional love for all living beings, for all the people, for all the creatures who exist in this planet, in this whole equinox. Send them the motion and the love and the light, the healing to all of them. Connect them with the beat of your heart, with the mantra, Om Hu, 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 receive with my open heart and mind the gift of the healing in me and my emotions. In this special emotion who now is gone and I have now the positive emotion in my being. Thank you, thank you mom. Thank you for to receive me again as your beloved daughter, as your beloved son. Thank you for your unconditional love and light. Thank you for to accept me. Thank you for to love me because you are light, mother. You are the rainbow. You are the love in every living being, in every human being. Thank you, Mother. Thank you. Thank you, Mother. Sas Kanya. Sas Kanya. Sas. My heart 
is yours. Father, ma. my life is yours. I am here because you support me in my everyday life. The life of myself and my family is in your hands. I trust you unconditionally. You hold the time of every living being in this planet. Bless me and bless my family. Bless my job, bless my home, bless my friends, bless my relationships, bless the world, bless the nature, bless my garden, bless my beloved pets, bless all the elements of life. Bless the snow, bless the rain, bless the sun and bless the moon, bless the children, bless the retired people, bless the elders, bless the grandson and granddaughters, bless all these beautiful planets, bless, bless, bless. You see the grandmother and the mother in shell smiling to you in this moment, sending profound love to all your being, physical and spiritual. And Kukulkan in the sun and in the moon, connecting with the heart of the sky, heart of the earth, and the Holy Spirit. And love and light, abundance, healing, peace, harmony, enthusiasm, joy to all the planet, to all the world in this fall equinox. Bless, bless, bless. So be it, so it is, it is done. So be it, so it is, it is done. So be it, so it is, it is done. In la catch, a la Take a breath, breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, in breathe out. The Mayan said, you are a precious stone. And I want you to remind this is what you are. All the policemen is necessary to make the diamond shine. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Mother. Another breath. You can open your eyes in this moment. Thank you, Miguel and Hal. Okay, uh, before everyone goes, I just have a couple of quick things here. Um, one is if you want to learn more about the calendar, um, you know, if you're, if you're new to the Maya calendar, this uh, workshop's an excellent uh, introduction. And if you're already familiar with it, it will um, it will give you an exciting new perspective on how to use it. So if you can join us on uh, Monday and Tuesday, please do. I think Jadrian just put up the um, the link, did you, or the uh, to, to register? Uh, uh, you know, it, it's um, the Maya calendar. The, the calendars are truly alive, and the energies from their glyphs are real. The, the energy is real. Um, and working with them can be life-changing as they organize the energies that surround you to support your life today and the hopes and dreams for a brilliant future. So the Maya calendar, um, I'm getting into it. I'm really uh, excited about it myself. So join us if you can. It's um, 
Monday and Tuesday, two hours each day. And also, um, many of you, I see, I recognize you and that you're part of the Maya Wisdom Circle. For those of you who aren't, um, it's a wonderful way to stay up to date with what we're doing. It's, uh, it's only $10 a month, and we, there's a, uh, we meet every Wednesday for messages from Lady Sack Cook, followed by discussions with Miguel Angel, and um, uh, you, know, you, you, sh you show up when you can. It's not like you have to be there every week. Um, but uh, there's also like a 20% discount on all Miguel Angel's um, wisdom teachings. So if you're part of the Maya Wisdom Circle, you, um, you, you get, there are a lot of benefits. And another one is the mini newsletter that's sent every week. So if there's something that you've been looking forward to, you get a reminder that it's coming up and it's um, a way for you to be a part of it, right? And, and to be a part of um, what we're doing here. So please consider it, go to the website, check it out and uh, let's see if that works. One last thing is um, the fall equinox is actually the 21st, which is next Wednesday, which falls on the um, time for the Maya Wisdom Circle. So the Maya Wisdom Circle, Ladies Neck Cook, is hosting the Maya Fall Equinox Ceremony that Miguel Angel will be leading. And that's going to be 11 o'clock on Wednesday. It's uh, by donation. Um, or if you're part of the Wisdom Circle, you'll get the... Um, the link to join as usual for Wednesday. So please, um, uh, please do that. I, I don't know, Miguel Angel, did you want to anybody to prepare anything for that, to bring anything to the? the... Yes, I, I suggested that for that day to have uh, at least um, uh, some water, you know, that we can bless during yeah. the ceremony. And there is like the sacred water that you can drink or you can use it for your ceremonies or healings, you know, but uh, uh, the water is the element who now is needed to be prepared for the things you wanted for yourself or for any healings or any kind of ceremonies or rituals you do. Yes, thank you. And I, and uh, for the fall equinox, I do find um, it's so feminine because it does have the element water and it, it's about emotions. And I feel, um, uh, Lady Sat Cook and uh, definitely Ishel Ishmukane are very much a part of it. And I'm quite confident they're going to show up. So please, if you can, show up. Anything else, Miguel Angel, did you want to? Uh, any question? I don't know if somebody has a comment or any question about the fall equinox. Ken? Uh, Miguel, isn't Ishel recognized as a water bearer? No, no, that I, Michelle has different um, ways uh, to present too. Uh, sometimes she's the John Moon, so she looks like a young woman. Sometimes she's like the, the priestess and she looks like a priestess with the fire. And sometimes she's old, is part of the different disguises, you know, represent the different aspects of the same thing the same element, you know, like the uh, the vertical waters represent the sacred masculine, the horizontal water represent the sacred feminine waters. The ones who descend represents shark in a word tradition, the ones who are horizontal represents each shell, so it's the rivers, you know, the lakes, the seas, and the ones who come in with the, the thunders and lightnings, you know, like shark, the, the Mayan said the chuck is broken, you know, the jars and all the pottery in order to, to give us the, the, the rain. That's, that's the Mayan's imag imagination. When you listen like that, it's chuck is broken, you know, the, the pottery to the, the, the thunder, water. Bring, bringing the thunder. We've been having thunder, you know. Yeah, thunder throughout this. Um... By the way, you saw an anecdote because now Eddie knows, knows what happened in, in England. The, the Queen Elizabeth came like probably 30 or 35 years ago, maybe 40, to open the light and sound show at Tushmal. 
So she arrived and then of course all the presidents and things and she went and they were watching the, the sound and light show and in and the in certain areas they said chucks and the rain and in that moment chuck came and the the queen was there you know so everybody was there in the rain and and, and they, they wanted to protect the, the queen and the queen said it's okay so if we are calling the rain we stay here so the mexican president and the rest of the president stay there until this finish so this is another anecdote with the queen elizabeth that happened in ushman that's yeah. wonderful. <laughs> Anybody have a final word? Sorry, can you, uh, we can't hear you. Okay. <laughs> okay, so thank you, Miguel. That was beautiful. Thank you, Trudy and everyone. Um, so because the equinox, also in Western, so we're going in Libra, which is the scales and the equinox. That's what the that's when that's what the sun is moving into, the sign of Libra. Libra is ruled by Venus. So how is Venus also related to the equinox? Kukulukan lives Venus, yeah. Space case. <laughs> yeah. But, Kukulkan has a brother who is represented as Venus, and they look each other. Yeah, and the repre his representation oh, by the eight triangles that uh, they show the pyramid of Kukulkan. So it's the moment when they they see each other, the Earth with Venus. They are twin brothers. They ex so we, exchange energies. You're making Venus male where i always think of venus as female well remember that there were no <laughs> male or female they were androgynous right 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 uh, yeah right right yeah. right i get so it is is androgynous means both forces in one yeah. <clears throat> but venus is present yeah okay you, yeah present. that's true yeah. yeah okay well join us again um on um for, on the ceremony and if you can for the um, the workshop and uh, learn more. Thank you, Miguel and Helen. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you to all of Bye, you. everyone. Bye, everyone. Now. Yeah. Thank Thank you. You.